Okay. Okay. Start. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ashita. I am telling a story. The title of the story is The Dancing Crow. Once a, a crow brought a meat from a vendor shop, and it sat on a branch of a tree. It was about to eat the piece of meat. At that time, a cunning fox came there. It was very hungry. It knows the weakness of the crow, and it said, "My dear brother and la, you are a great singer. Among the all crows, your voice is very sweet. Your voice is very sweet." The The crow yielded to his boasting and started. The the crow put the meat under his leg and started to sing. The piece of and the crow the fox got another idea to get the meat from the crow and he said, "You dance and sing." The crow. The peacock is nothing before he will dance, and the crow yielded to his boasting and started to sing and dance. The piece of meat fell out, and immediately the the crow the fox caught the meat and ran away. The crow shocked to his trick. Moral of the story is: more beware of the spies. ओके अर्षित मल्ली चेपा मोरल हो बीवेर बीवेर ऑफ आधा स्प्राइड ओके कैन यू सिंग हाउ द क्रोस सॉन्ग सिंग द सॉन्ग चला पारे दिखा के पाटा चला पारे तेली हो आह कहाँ के लगान तो तेली था नहीं को कैन यू ऑल सिंग लेट क्रो यस यस प्लीज सी जस्ट लाइक दैट यू आर जस्ट शाउटिंग यू शुड सिंग लाइक क्रो Arjit, next time do like that, okay? 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 Aditi Siroin, Anisha, can I unmute? Very good. Good. Next. Anisha, you can start your story. Okay. Good evening. My name is Anisha. I'm studying in uh, fourth standard. So the title of my story is "The Thief and the Coat." Once there was a thief looking for something to steal. Uh, then he saw a gentleman wearing a new coat. He thought to himself. I must have that coat to to get food. So he went to the uh, gentleman and uh, said, "Hello, um, could you please uh, chat? Could you please talk with me? I'm so lonely." So they started talking. After some time, the thief. Yawned and howled like a wolf. The gentleman now was surprised and asked, "Sir, why did you howl like a wolf?" Then the chief said, "First, you grab, sorry, hold my clothes, or else I will tear them into pieces." The gentleman hold hold held the coat. Then the thief said, 
actually when i yawn the third time i become a werewolf this frightened the this frightened the gentleman he 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 left he took out his leg to run but the thief grabbed his coat and said sir please uh, no. hold my clothes or else i will tear them into pieces and then he yawned how then yawned like a wolf Now took out and then again he yawned and howled like a wolf. The thief took out the coat from him and ran away as fast as he could. The thief caught the coat and then happily went away. So moral of the story is we should not trust anyone blindly. Thank you. Very good, Nisha. Very good. Very well narrated. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. Thank you, Ayan. We move next. Uh, next, we have Rishita Sriya. Rishita, could you please start your story? You are on mute, Rishi. Am I audible now? Of course. Good evening. Today I am going to narrate a Punjabi folk tale. Once there was a named, sorry, a crow named Kaka. Kaka was under the impression that he was the most beautiful bird in the village. He also loved terrorizing smaller birds. There was a big tree in the same village. In this tree lived a small sparrow in this tree lived a small sparrow it came kaka came to know that this small sparrow had laid eggs and kaka felt very hungry all of a sudden so kaka went to the little sparrow's nest and said Hey sparrow, I am hungry. Give me all your eggs so I can eat them. The clever sparrow made a plan. She said, "Oh, Kaka, it would be be my absolute honor to give you, a handsome creature, my eggs." I must say this, if I may, that I must say, if I may, that your mouth is very dirty indeed, and I shall give you my eggs only if you wash your mouth. So, Kaka went to the village river in order to wash his mouth. When Kaka reached the river, he said, "Hey, river! I am Kaka, the most beautiful bird in the whole village, and I am here because I need your waters to 
wash my mouth so i can get some eggs from the little sparrow the river felt pity for the little sparrow sparrow so it said so it said to the crow of course i shall give you my water but i do not want you to dirty my waters by dipping your mouth into me you must go and fetch a container into which you can collect the water and wash your bee so the crow went to a potter's house and he said to the potter potter brother i am the most beautiful bird in the whole village and you must make me a pot so i can go to the river and get some water from it in order to wash my mouth after which i shall go to the sparrow and claim her eggs so the potter also took pity for the sparrow and he said all right kaka i shall make you a pot but for that you must fetch me some mud as i have run out of it so kaka flew and flew and came to a field kaka walked over to the field and introduced himself as the most handsome bird in the village and told the field the reason he was there for the field listened patiently and said i shall give you some mud all right but because of this heat my soil has hardened and you will need something hard to dig me up with kaka did not know where to find a sharp object to dig dig the field so he flew and he flew and he flew and then he came to a stag with sharp antlers he walked over to the stag and said brother stag i am kaka the most handsome crow in the village and he told the stag the reason he was there then the stag which also took pity on the sparrow said of course i cannot give you my antlers unless i'm dead then kaka thinks all right then you will be killed kaka flew and he flew and he flew and came up to two wild dogs and he said i am kaka the most handsome bird in the whole village and you must help me to kill the stag and he told them the reason why they needed to kill the stag the two wild dogs also took pity on the stag sorry and on the stag and the sparrow and said we shall hunt the stag down for you if it helps you but for that you must fetch us a huge amount of fresh frothy milk so we can get energy in this hot sun so kaka flew when he flew and he flew and he saw a buffalo chewing on dry grass he went down to the buffalo and said i am kaka the most handsome 
bird in the village and i need your milk and he explains the reason why he needs the cross milk the buffalo's milk the buffalo also takes pity on the sparrow and says all right i will give you some milk but for that you will have to fetch me some fresh green grass this dry old grass cannot give you sufficient milk so kaka flew and he flew and he flew and came to a patch of green grass he said to the grass i am the most handsome bird in the whole village and you must give me some grass so i can give it to the buffalo and he explains the reason why he needs to give grass to the buffalo and the patch of grass also takes pity for the sparrow and says if you must cut me you will need something sharp go and get something sharp then you can cut some of my grass so kaka flew directly to the house of a blacksmith and he said Bla- brother blacksmith i want you to make me a knife the blacksmith says all right i shall make you a knife but i shall do that only if you carry this piece of iron to my house and he holds up a piece of iron kaka delighted says of course brother i will do it so kaka takes the piece of iron and flies to the blacksmith's home but when kaka reaches the blacksmith's home and slips the iron piece of iron through the window he feels very cold as wind starts blowing so he thinks and he go into the blacksmith's house so he goes into the blacksmith's house and but just as he opened the door a strong wind blows and kaka is blown into the fireplace he jumps out of the fireplace but not quick enough and his tail catches fire oh my poor tail he screams oh my poor tail all the other birds will start to tease me if i have no tail and since that day on he stopped terrorizing smaller birds and also stopped bragging about his handsomeness that's the end of the story but there is one more thing i'd like to say from where to where did the story end up from the sparrow i tended just from the sparrow it went till the blacksmith now let us see the order from the sparrow where did it go to okay it went to the river from the sparrow mm. and from the river where did it go to to the potter to the potter yes. to the potter and from the potter where did it go to it flew and it flew and it flew to <laughs> flew and flew to for this to the stag no to the field ah uh, okay and from the field it flew to the stag hmm. no it and flew and flew stag, okay okay carry on carry on stag to from the stag to dogs mm. wild dogs the wild dogs from the wild dogs to the wild dogs to the, the wild dogs wanted milk buffalo yes buffalo yes buffalo and from the buffalo to from the buffalo to the grass yes the patch of green grass and from the patch of green grass to the blacksmith black yes the blacksmith and the blacksmith led the crow the poor crow to his house where kaka bird 
he stayed burned so and now he is no more the beautiful bird in the whole village hmm he might be but he start bragging that's the point okay thank you rishta that's a nice thank story good good uh, moving forward uh, manta would like to narrate that so we will go to shubham shubham can you uh, shubham can you please uh, switch on your video and narrate the story shubham yes continue shubham good evening today i am going to narrate the story the title of the story is uh, life and money a well known speaker with uh, 20 dollars started a seminar in the room of 200 people and asked who would like that 20 dollars all raised their hands but crumbling the note he asked who still wanted it still the hands were up in the hand again he dropped the 20 dollars on the ground and started to grind it into the floor with his shoe picking a filthy filthy and crumbled note he asked who still wanted it still the hands still the hands were up then he started uh, describing the, uh, the main cause of it my friends we we, are, we have all learned a very valuable lesson no, no matter what was done to the money the it was still wanted because it did not decrease in value it was still worth 20 dollars many times in our lives we all we all are dropped crumpled and ground into the into the dirt by the decisions we make for the circumference that come in a in our way we may feel as thought that that we are worthless but we would not feel disheartened even in face of dangers the moral of the story is our life is as significant as money thank you good job good short short and sweet good yes okay we shall move to the next uh, narrator who is that short movies short movies are you there yes uncle yeah please uh, switch on your video and narrate the story beta yes uncle so good evening everyone my name is atiti and i am studying class 7 today i am going to tell a story the title of my story is the two advisors a rich farmer lived in a village he had two sons he had some wealth once he felt that his end was coming so he divided his wealth between his two sons then he fell ill he called his sons to him and said sons my health has come take care of yourself and the business before dying i want to give you two advices one do not let the sunlight fall on you and two whenever you need money and don't have enough go to the temple and take some money from the steeple of the temple and go there before sun said and after saying that the farmer died the sons looked at their business the younger one was clever he he prospered and his wealth multiplied several times but the elder brother was a bit slow in brain he was losing his his wealth he was sad the losses continued soon he was in trouble then he remembered the secret advices of his father he tried first he got a tunnel built from his home to the place of his work he started using it to save himself from the sunlight it did no good to him in fact he lost whatever little money he had left with him in getting that tunnel built he thought of the father's other advice 
take money from the steeple of the village temple. He went to the temple at sunset, and and stayed at the steeple. He thought, "How would the steeple give me money?" He could not understand anything and returned home dejected. The younger brother was kind besides being clever. He knew the problems of his elder brother. He went to him and said, "Brother, don't lose heart. The two secret advices the father gave us can solve all our problems." The elder brother moaned, "I have tried them. No good." The younger brother laughed. "You did not interpret the advices correctly, my brother. Not letting sunlight fall on you doesn't mean that you build a tunnel from your home to the, to your workplace. It means that you should go to work before sun rises and return after." Sunset. In this way, you will be able to work more and gain more money. Then the younger brother, then the elder brother asked, "Then what did he mean by? Then what did he mean by to get money from the steeple of the temple?" Then the younger brother said, "Look at this. We we can go to the temple and." We can go to the temple. By the way, it's almost time of the sunset. So when they went to the temple, the brother, uh, the younger brother, asked the elder brother, "So can you please tell me where the shadow of the tem- temple steeple is falling right now?" The elder brother said, "It's falling in the well." The younger brother said, "Glee." The younger brother said, "It means that. It means that our father has." Buried. Our father has buried some treasure under the well. So the elder brother used that money to make his business grow, and acted more wisely. And then, and then he, and then he always kept care of all the important matters. Thank you. Very nice, Aditi. Very nice story. Beautifully narrated. Okay. Next we have our hero. Who is our hero? Respects. Ah, he's Ayan. smiling. He's smiling. Yes, you are the hero, Ayan. Yes. You can narrate your story. Unmute yourself and narrate the story, please. Good evening, everybody. Last week, our Jiankan. Has narrated few stories on empathy, consistency, and quality. Interested us to pick one of these topics. So this is Ayan, and I pick consistency. My story is a story of a drop of water one day. was raining a drop of water came near a big piece of a rock and said hey friend can we have some chat the rock said you tiny drop of water you are nothing in front of me if you drop on me Nothing will happen to me, but you will be divided into many pieces. The rock laughed. Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! The drop of water felt hurt and upset. Few days later, rainy season came. It started raining every day. Heavily, these drops of water persistently started falling on the rock. And do you know what happened? Tiny drops of water changed the surface of the rock. Dripping water follows out. A rock, not through force, but through persistency. 
but through persistence. A mere drop of water can dig a hole in a rock if it's consistent in its character. One drop of water in every couple of minutes can can dig a hole in a rock. But a bucket of water on a rock all at a time will not make any difference. So, if we want a great change to occur, we have to be consistent in actions. Small daily efforts leads to massive results. Dipping water can dig a hole in a rock. It's decision, it's the decision to do once will not change much. Even doing it two or three times will not make any difference. It's the decision and action to do it consistently that allows right <laughs> Moral of the story is Endure and persist, this pain will turn into goodbye and bye. Habits finally change into character. Thank you. Beautifully narrated, Diane, once again. Thank you so much. Very well narrated. Super. Anisha is... Anisha, you are unmuting in between. You are breaking us. Beautiful written again. We will move to the next one. Next one is we have Sarvan. Sarvan, can you switch on your video and narrate the story? Yes, Uncle. Yes, wonderful. Good evening, everybody. I am Krishna Sarvan. Uh, today, I am going to narrate a story. The title of my story is The Dullard. It's from the Panchatantra Tales. There were once four Brahmins who had grown up together in the same village. But three of them spent all their time poring over scholarly texts, but not so the fourth. That's why they used to call him The Dullard. They finished their studies but were jobless. One day, one of them got an idea. The idea is here. Why don't we go to the city and make use of our learning and collect a fortune? The other three agreed, but one said, we are not going to take the dullard with us. He would only be a burden for us. The other two tried to convince him and convinced him. And the four set out to the city. The route to the city consists of thick forest. After walking some miles, they saw some bones lying on the ground. They were looking like some animal bones. One of them said, why don't we test our learning on that bones? The first can give the make the bones into a shape and give the skeleton. The other can give the muzzle and skin. At last, the third can breathe life into it. And the first started to build the skeleton and built it. The fourth, which is the dullard, uh, tried to convince them, let us go from here. Please, that looks like an animal. It's a lion, I think so. And they didn't listen. And the second time, when uh, the other breath, sorry, the other uh, gave, gave the muzzle and the skin. This time the dullard was damn sure. He climbed a tree and uh, warned them, this is your last chance. Let us go, from, uh, go away from here. As usual, they didn't listen. 
the third breath life into it this time the dolor didn't won then the lion pounced upon and killed all the three the dolor felt sorry for them and wait for some time till the lion left and went back to the village can now the moral of the story is mere scholarship without common sense is futile they had uh, the they studied well but were jobless they got an idea but uh, just because of their senselessness senselessness or something they it costed their lives yeah common sense is very important his common sense is very important lot of things lot of things with common sense we yes, in the, yeah common sense is very important rakesh sir yes. very good story thank you very nice common sense these days most of us don't have that unfortunately <laughs> yeah i think uh, now mansa can you narrate your story now yeah just a sec sure take your time hello everyone am i clearly visible one second or should i off this light oh please off the light just a sec is it okay absolutely fine wonderful continue so oh, good evening everyone this is mansa so last time i told you a story of the adventures of uh, timothy that's the tiger right and it was yes. written by ruskin bond okay so not james bond he's no cousin to james bond uh, so today i'll be sharing another story which was written which is written by ruskin bond okay so if you quite well, if you remember well then we had toto in that story what is to who is toto which animal does anyone remember parrot ah uh, no it is a small little monkey it's a monkey so today we will be seeing the story of the adventures of toto okay so grandfather bought toto from a tonga driver means a horse uh, driven carriage driver for 5 rupees okay so it was basically tied to a pole and there was a feeding bowl in front of it why tied to a pole or else it will start jumping around onto everyone's heads okay so it was tied to a pole and grandfather didn't feel that it fit there so that's why he took it and and he added it to his little private zoo okay so then as he came home he remembered something what he remembered that grandmother always was very irritated if grandfather brought some bird or animal home because it's nothing but trouble right <laughs> so what happened grandfather decided okay now she is she may be in a bad mood if i say this i'll tell her when she's in a good mood we also think na if we do some padpani if we break something we'll think ah amma is not in good mood today we'll tell her when she's very impressed with us so he also did the grandmother so what did he do he took raskin's help that is his grand uh, son's help and he tied it to a cupboard but how tied to a cupboard in that cupboard he tied it to uh, with a rope to a peg peg means a uh, nail okay which is stuck into the wall so he tied with the rope his hands and he and there was a wallpaper on uh, behind in front of it so that if they open the cupboard also it, uh, it the, the monkey is not seen so uh, and then uh, they left both of them left after some time this bird came back to look what to check on toto what will they find they found that toto broke the peg he broke, he tore the poster and what else did he do 
there was a uh, coat a blazer of ruskin he tore that completely to tatters and then ruskin saw this and said see grandfather what did your toto do to my blazer now what will he expect he will think ah no grandfather will say oh so bad of toto to do like this don't worry nana i'll get you another coat he will say but what did grandfather say he said oh my god this toto is very clever very good monkey <laughs> so then grandfather uh, you understand the mentality and uh, love for toto right so next they understood that they can't keep toto in the house so they decided to move him to the place where all other animals were kept that is in the servants quarters there all the animals you know used to live very friendly in a very friendly manner okay so what happened when toto was shifted there he would not sit calm he has to do something so what did he do he started screeching the he he did not let anyone sleep in the night and morning full he used to trouble everyone there okay so they understood the toto this was not the place to keep toto so next what did grandfather do he thought okay tomorrow i am going to saranpur to collect my pension let me take toto along with me so he took tot he took a canvas kit bag okay it's made of that canvas sheet that we use for drawing and then he put toto inside it and buckled that bag so that only his face could come out but he could not come out but would toto stay in there after so then he went to the station he kept the bag down and then he went to collect his ticket in that meanwhile what toto started doing to escape he started jumping up and down to remove the bucket so how did he do start jumping 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 then rolling on the floor so that the bucket would come out but all this was seen by all those onlookers and thinking what is there in that bag so dangerous that it's be doing like that so then uh, then uh, grandfather looked back and he seeing toto rolling on the ground he quickly picked up the bag and he boarded the train thank god that toto didn't do anything in the train or else i also can't imagine what would have happened okay so as soon as they got down uh, they were going and tt the person one person one ticket collector looks at your ticket right uh, when you get down a station so there the ticket collector said sir please show me your ticket so uh, grandfather took and showed his then what did toto do suddenly he popped his head out and he gave him a wide grin he, he gave a wide grin to him the ticket collector was scared for a moment then he said sir you have a dog with you he said what dog i have no dog he said no sir in your bag your dog or whatever some four leg creature is there in your bag he, then grandfather said it's not a four leg creature it's a monkey which which walks on two legs so it is not a four leg creature you know but the ticket collector was adamant he said no sir it's a dog only so he had to the grandfather had to pay extra for toto then you you get irritated right so grandfather also got irritated he took out the turtle out of his pocket and he asked this is also animal only you will charge for this also karke then uh, the exam, the ticket collector looked at it very closely nicely he said very happily and triumphantly he said no sir no charge it is not a dog or a four legged animal so then there the story was ended then after going back home he has to keep toto somewhere no so what he did he kept him with nana the donkey okay so there one day grandfather went to see if toto settled in okay because he is getting a new partner so he thought okay let's go and check on toto so when he went he saw nana going forward back forward back he thought what is this what happened to him and all and then he went and to see nana was trying to reach his 
a bundle of hay and on the bundle of hay we have Toto with a stick. So Toto was sitting like this. Whenever Nana was coming for it, he would go for it, hit him on his head and come back and sit down on the bundle of hay. Then what did he do? He went, he sat on to Nana's ears and started biting his ears. Now, to then Nana was very afraid of Toto. So that's why grandfather got understood that Toto is not to be kept here also. Okay. And eventually Toto and Nana never became friends. Okay. So then, it was a very cold December afternoon. You know, right, in North India, how the Decembers are. So then what happened? Toto was looking somewhere, looking around for something. So he was looking for warmth so that he could keep himself warm. Okay. So then he, uh, he used to run around the house. That's why grandmother decided she will give him a tub of hot water every, uh, every day in the winter thing, in the winter uh, evenings. Okay. So if when Toto got the uh, tub of hot water, he would not directly jump into it. What will he do? First, he will put the finger and measure. See if the temperature is okay for him to get. Then he will slowly step inside the uh, bucket, uh, tub. Then he would sit down. But only till his neck gets the water. His head should not again get the water. Okay. So after that, he would first relax for some time. Then take some soap in his hands or legs. Rub it well and apply on his body. Then he used to again take a dip into the water. Then what to do? We generally use a towel to rub ourselves, right? But what did Toto do? After that, he got, as soon as the water became cold, okay, hot water will become eventually cold. After that, he used to get up, run to the fireplace and dry himself up. Then he would stand and he would dry himself up. And in this procedure, if anyone saw, saw him and laughed at him, gone. He will stop there. He will sit there. He won't continue his bath only. <laughs> so, he used to feel very offended if somebody laughed at him. Okay. So, one day what happened? Toto almost boiled himself alive. How? He was looking for warmth one afternoon. Okay. He was looking around, looking around. He found a kettle. Okay, large kettle, little big. Okay, it was being boiled for tea actually. Okay, he didn't see the fire beneath. What did he do? He went, he, he opened the lid. It was light. So he could take out the lid and then he checked the temperature. It seemed fine enough. It seemed good for a bath. So then what did he do? He slowly stepped inside the uh, kettle. Then what happened? Boiling means eventually the temperature will go, go up, right? So, suddenly Toto started feeling very, you know, hot from down. He, so, he got up. But then the cold breeze came onto his face. He thought, no, 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 no. It's just because, I think it's my imagination. It's very cold and he sat down. But then hot, if he gets up, cold. So, he was doing this. He was doing this for a lot of time. Till grandmother came and stopped him. So then grandmother took him out of that kettle and saw that his bumps, which were already red, became even more red. So he, he bum had to be applied to his bumps. Okay. So that was the story of Toto almost boiling himself up alive. So these are uh, so the uh, these things after all these things. He also started to make holes in others' uh, clothes. He started to break dishes. Everything he could find, he would do all the disasters. So then grandfather understood that for uh, living, for having a nice, quiet, peaceful life, we should keep Toto away. So for a loss of two rupees and for a peaceful life, he sold Toto. He sold Toto to the Tonga driver from which he bought Toto only. So these were the adventures of Toto. And what mischiefs did he do while he was with grandfather and Ruskin? Thank you. Very nice, Mansa. But selling Toto is not good. 
<laughs> you have to tell that to Ruskin. I'm sorry. Very very good thing you did there. I mean, uh, you stood up and read the story. I think every every other kid should do that. Good good yes. Right. Don't just sit while narrating the story. Just stand up if you have a computer. If it is mobile, yes, you don't have the option. If you have a computer, stand back. Use your body. Use your hands. Like Manta did, right? Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, we, uh, I think that's all for today. And then we have Spark Developer. Uh, can you unmute yourself? We want to narrate any story now. Yes, sir. Yeah, you can show your video. Switch on your video and narrate the story. Sir, I'm going to narrate a very short story. It's One called minute. Best Friends. Yeah, we can't see your face. Can you adjust uh, your yeah. camera a little bit so that we can see you clearly? So can you see me now? Yeah, fine, fine. Yeah, yeah, narrate. Go on. Sir, once they lived two friends, sir, uh, two best friends. They were walking past a desert, and in some point, one friend slapped another friend because they had an argument. And after a f after some time, they found an oasis. The friends were thirsty, so both the friends went to the oasis. And the friend who got slab was drowning in the oasis. Then the friend saved him, and then wrote on a stone that today my friend saved my life. And before he wrote on a he wrote on sand that my friend slapped me today. He wrote it because the wind of forgiveness would erase the sand. Fantastic. But, but no, but no wind can erase stone. The moral of the story is don't. Don't value the things you have in your life. Value who, value who you have in your life. Good, good, very nice. Awesome. What is your name, beta? I forgot. Sorry. Spark. What did you say your name as? Sir Saurish, sir. Saurish. Yes, sir. You are brother of Archita, who is friend of Aditi. Right? Wonderful, wonderful. Very nice. Very nice. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Yes. Uh, uh, Rohini, are you there? Surya. I'll put a chapter next week. Huh? Next week. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. Guys, I think that's all uh, the stories we have for uh, this week. So, who anybody wants to play this non non sing? Shall we? Yeah, I want to. Oh, okay, Ian is one, and uh, yeah, Sarvan, you want to play? Yeah, I request everyone else to mute, uh, including myself. Uh, Ian and uh, Sarvan will play the game. We'll watch. Okay, Ian, you know Sarvan, right? The blue T-shirt. Sarvan, you know the specs. Yes. A hero body. Ian. Yes, I, I can. Mute. Okay. No, no. Yes, I'm going mute. You guys play. Start with this and end with this, okay? You have five minutes. Ayan, you can start. Okay. Yeah, Ayan, Sarvan asked you to start, so you, you you are the first one to start. Give it a go. Ayan, you have is to your, Is your t-shirt black? I'm studying sixth class. What's your favorite movie? It's 
it's a tree behind my garden. Whose turn it is? My brother is playing. Are your flex? Are your specs blue? And could you answer me first? It's a bangle here. What game are we playing? I have a soft board. Is your left ear closed? I am try to answer it fast. Okay. I have a dog in my garden. Is your tank pink? What? Is your tank in pink color last two questions last two Made a blackboard. Are you a boy? Last question. We call last question was. Yeah. I have red color card. Okay, good, good. Both of you well played. Ayan, you can make it faster next time, okay? Okay. Now, now we we'll move to the next one. Anisha wants to play. And who else wants to play? With Anisha? Riddhi? I want to play, but not with her. No, we did the last time. We, you can. So, Anisha wants to play with Anisha. Give it a try, Aditi. That's okay. No, means actually, if you want, we can play anytime at home, right? Means here, we can <laughs> but we play with anyone. Seeing, we won't be seeing you guys, right? You, you, you both know a lot of secrets also. We can play better. Who will ask the question? You can ask a question or a sentence or anything. Okay, Anisha, I'll play with you then. Okay. R Rishita, you want to try? Rishita or Mansa? I'll give it a try then. Wonderful. Yeah, Anisha, Anisha and uh, Anisha and uh, Mansa, play. Just uh, three minutes, okay? Stop. Okay. There you go. Start. Who will ask? Mansa, you start. Okay. 
Who who will ask the first question? You. Plants. He could not answer her. Okay, try again. This time, okay. Arun will start. Okay. Ready, start. Sir, I should do it. You start. Yes, sir. You start. Yes, Did this start? Karo. Okay. Hmm. What is your name? What is your name is her question. I'm wearing the same badge. Do you like online classes? Do you like online classes? I know you're cheap. Do you like your shirt? Do you like uh, uh, do you like to read the signs? My dad is in the hall watching TV. Is your fan working? Cord is spreading very quickly. Uh, telling me questions. Is my sister telling me questions? I know Surya uncle very well. <laughs> Do you like to sing? Aditi came on cam. Is the, is the earth round? Somebody messaged the hi. In which class do you study? We have a newcomer for SEM. Saturn has uh, rings. Saturn has rings. Rishita, um, stories are very good. Last two questions, kids. Last two. Faster, faster, girl. Faster, can I say? My name is Riddhi. Ruskin Bond is a very famous writer. Do you know how to use the keyboard? Do you know how to uh, do you know how to play a keyboard? This is the last question. We are done. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, Anish. Thank you, I'm answer. I think uh, that's all for the day for this thank evening. You. So anyone have anything to add, anything to say? Now is the chance. Suri uncle? Yes, servant? Could we make a script of it? Script of what? Yes, sir. Uh, could, I, could I write the questions before and I can see or any restrictions? 
I mean, are you talking about the game we are trying to play now? Yes, yes, yes. For next week, would I make a script and read the question? No, you want to uh, take it to text format, typing. No, no, no. Uh, could I yeah, write? Yeah, you can talk and play with your friends. You can uh, take. Uh, no, I was asking, uh, could I make a script on my book, and I can see and uh, could I see and uh, ask questions? Of course, you can ask, but somebody, if somebody. uh if somebody say if your third point is uh, my name is sarun and somebody ask you uh, what is what is your name then all your script goes unprepared right waste uh, i mean questions yeah questions or whatever sentence question whatever it is you can try nothing okay. wrong in trying right you can come prepared yeah i mean that instead of saying on time uh, and thinking mm -hmm. could i make just i ask him I yeah i yeah. understand see for, for what say what is your first st uh, statement or question or sentence yes 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 just say you are prepared what is what is that one statement for example or weird answers also whatever just tell me one thing mm, what is your name yeah if i if my first point is my my if i'm asking your name Yes. i am asking the first question i ask what is your name and then you say what is your name again so there is a sink then you lose right no 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 i was not uh, i prepare i i would like to prepare weird answers and use one for one yeah yeah answer yes the preparedness might not work in this case that's what i'm saying trying to say yes it, it is might work it might not work the point is, is you are somehow risky you can try nothing wrong right Yes, I try. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you. I am making a game just now. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. I made a game just now. Wonderful. Would you like to share it with us? Okay. Okay. Say. One person that plays, he should say the answer first, and the second person. We say the question after the answer. Oh, that's it. Very fun. So, if I let me repeat what I understood, okay? Say, for example, if you and me are playing, I tell the answer and then you ask the question. Is that your game, Ian? Yes. Oh, nice. Did you play this with anyone? No, not now. Okay. Nice. Nice. So you want to play it with your father now? Ah, uh, okay. Krishna, ready, ready for the bombs. Ayan, you start. We'll just play for two minutes. Ayan, you tell the answer. Daddy will ask the question. Eight. You need, to, you need to unmute that. Unmute the mic. Ramnath Kovind. Krishna, please ask the question. Yeah, you you have to unmute yourself. You are in mute, Krishna. that is in mute okay who is the president of india who is the husband of savita kovind <laughs> okay next vitamin d it gives vitamin d could you repeat I am. I could not hear. It gives vitamin D. Oh, who wants to answer that question? <laughs> who wants to answer that question? Answer that answer as with question. Sunlight gives which vitamin? Question is, who what? Do sun gives? Yes, good. 
sunlight vitamin d very good nice internet i think there is some issue with the internet but offline without internet you can play this much better play with your uh, niece or no no not niece what is this uh, cousin uncle okay. we can play and we can also play it in same group uncle yeah i i i am somehow think lot of people are getting bored but yes you, uh, guys our meeting is done if you want to leave please leave uh, the kids want to have fun so let them have okay i'm uh, i'm record i'm switching off the record option okay now who wants to play yeah i want to see some hands yeah who wants to play it aditi Sir, when you are done, for okay, the voice is not clear. Till says record. Yeah, I'm not. I'm stopping it now.